How are you doing, lads? Very well, thank you. We're here with Billy, Junior and Senior. Yeah. Don't know again, we're looking at your tractor. Um, what is it, lads? It's a 1915 overtime tractor. One of 250 were brought into Ireland by Harry Ferguson from 1914 to 18. This one is 1915. 1915? Yeah. 160 years of age. And who did they brought in? Harry Ferguson? Harry Ferguson, yes. So this is obviously before the Grey Ferguson and before he came up with his own idea. Before he designed the Black Ferguson even, yes. Can you tell us a bit about it? Where did you come across it? I got the engine from a fellow collector from Cork and it, the engine belonged to Thompson's of High Park, Ross Cray, County Offaly. And I got the engine and textbook and the rest of it I had we collected up from all over the country, you could say, bits and pieces, yeah. Yet. I would say our, And our what we didn't have, we manufactured ourselves. Very good. And over the 250 that Harry Ferguson sold, how many are left? There is three of them surviving in Ireland and we have the three of them. You have the three of them? We have the three, yeah. Uh, we have a 1914, 15 and 16. Brilliant, brilliant. So you have the monopoly on it? <laughs> you could say that, you could say that, yes. Yeah. And tell me, Billy, why, why over time? Just, uh, I suppose, in my early days when I started collecting, because the first thing I came across was in overtime, in very, very bad repair, a different month of this now. Yeah. And uh, after that, bits and pieces started to come my way, and uh, eventually I saw the makings of a second one, and I carried on from there, and that's basically it, and we still have a lot of spare parts to the present day. Brilliant. I had a very good friend in England by the name of John Mann, who passed away quite recently, and he collected a lot of stuff out of Ireland, and all over the UK, and uh, I got some of this, but I was shot there by it off of him, and that's the way it went, yeah. Right. And we say out of the ones that Harry Ferguson imported in Ireland and sold, do, where were they built? They were all built in Bowley in London. Oh, yeah. Yeah, with the, the, the engine is actually American, it's the same engine as the Waterloo Boy. Okay. And the first 40 of them they brought in, uh, in CKD, completely knocked down, and they just said that they could cast a lot of the stuff themselves. So they cast a lot of the, there was 4,000 of them built, and they cast a lot of the pieces for the 4,000 themselves in the UK. Now, you'll note that uh, John Deere bought the Waterloo plant in 1918. Yes. And after that, they stopped the supply of parts to the UK. So they were, the all time money there from 14 to 18. Oh. And the very second thing that happened was in that era, Harry, Fer Harry Henry Ford was after, Perfecting his little tractor, yes. which is affectionately you known as an MOM, which stands for Ministry of Munition. He hadn't his name on the top of the tank planting at that stage. He sent in 6,000 of them on a sale or a turn basis, and a lot of the overtimes were recycled for, for to make munitions because they were cut for metal during World War I. Oh, so the survival, yeah, the survival rate of overtime was quite scarce. Uh, was, yeah. And we say all the overtimes that were sold in the UK and Ireland, and that, how many of them exist all together? You know? I suppose we reckon we'd we'll be hard pressed to find 20 of them. You'd be hard pressed to find 20 that are fully restored. Now, there would be certain places where you might find the remains a few of them, but I think the overall rate in England is there somewhere about 40 of them there, excluding the three that are here in Ireland. But if that's the case, we say 40 in England, the three here, the three here. That's a very high figure, so... It is, but these are unique to Harry Ferguson, you see. Yeah. Harry, Fer Harry Ferguson wasn't the agent for Britain at all, like. Oh, he wasn't? Oh, no, right. no. Okay. It was the man by the... Uh, Martin. Uh, L.J. Martin was the, uh, the distributor in the UK, and he was... He's effectively what started the overtime track company. Oh, Christ. Okay, yeah. 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 And, um, we we'll say, Harry Ferguson, was it out of the north? He sold them, or did he have dealers, or...? He dealers. It's bad, brother. About Harry Ferguson. Harry Ferguson, the dealers. Oh yeah, but he had agents all over the country, yeah. and in the, in this case, the, this particular one was Thompson's of High. Uh, F.J. Horst de Tullamore was the the, the salesman. He saw that out of the sale, he saw that the Thompson's of High Park was Clay County Offaly, yeah. but they tell us that anywhere there was one of them sold, that Harry Ferguson actually visited the farm oh, yeah. to show the farmer how to start them and use them and work them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but of course they must have been a fierce hard sell too, like. Well, you see, uh, like, uh, farmers were very slow getting rid of horses yeah. in that era, yeah. and then the machinery was all designed for horses. There wouldn't be a lot of machinery 
available for tractors to pull at that stage. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like you can imagine now trying to convince some fella to put away the horse. Yeah, and you see uh, the other thing with, to find the price of it, they were 495 quid in 1915. A lot of money. Which was a lot of money. To buy a lot of land for that at that time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even yeah. in come up forward to the 70s, you buy a lot of land yeah, in the And they were also, the, the, the Waterloo buy was also slow to sell in, 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 in America. Yeah. And they actually sold the engine as a portable stationary engine on four wheels. Oh. And it was pulled, pulled from shed to shed with horses. Oh, this, the horse was yeah, still involved? Yeah, to hold the different bits of machinery. Yeah. Brilliant, yeah, brilliant, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. And, um, like, is, this a, is it a big operation to start? Uh, this is an unusual system started start to the right. There's what they call half compression uh, cups and the cylinders. Yes. So you open doors and on the suction stroke you pour in a tablespoon of petrol. Yes. And it will fire on that in and you close doors and it will run away then itself from there, yeah. Oh, yeah, brilliant, yeah, brilliant, yeah, brilliant, yeah, brilliant, yeah. brilliant, brilliant. No, that's kind of it, I can't ask you a whole pile more about it, really. It's 24 horsepower, basically, that's is the, is the thing, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Bill, yourself, you, 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 I think you're, you're working on one at the moment. Yeah, we're, I suppose we're in the process of building a fourth one. Um, we kind of knew nothing else when we were growing up. and. And the kind of head spare, so I kind of said to him I wouldn't mind building one. So we have the chassis together, and she's standing on four wheels, and there's gears and limerick being cut at the minute. So we're just we're tipping along nicely at it. Like it'll be another one done and restored, right. another one out on the road. And you're getting good advice on the that, that wouldn't be scarce anyway. The, the advice would always be there, to be fair, and uh, we'd always consult each other on what we'll be doing, and you'll be contacted by fellas from England and America and Belgium about trying to get them running or that they'd have problems with them so you could be on the ground frequently about problems with them and getting them going but it's just something we enjoy it's a great hobby to be in town we um i suppose we're known now far and wide from so yeah you got you got a phone call recently i was told inquiring about the price one I did. I was actually I was approached by two fellas in the UK about buying one that was coming at an auction. Then I was approached by a few different fellas, and I suppose didn't something I ever thought I'd get to. But sure, we'll take it while it is here. Are, anyway. are you becoming the overtime guru? I wouldn't ever like to think that I'm a guru, but um, it, it isn't. It is knowledge we've just built up over the years. I suppose and things like that. And, uh, Certain fellas, it still be worrying you know, about your age, like when you're 25 years of old, and you know how much so much about a tractor that's 106 years old. Like, you know, yeah, so yeah. I suppose it's just the way we were brought up around them when we were young. Yeah, yeah, there were all. And so much time we're granted out in the shade and things like that, so yeah. we don't we don't know any better. Yeah. It's what we call it, it's what we refer to as barrel and chain steering. The axle is pivoted in the centre, uh, which was uh, copied off of the famous four wheel dray along go. Yes. As the, you know, the shaft yes. followed the horse. But they call that steering aim and hope, so you aim it for a certain <laughs> person. Hope you get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this Brilliant. Is, yes. And the other thing is, uh, you're supposed to change the oil after 24 working hours. It runs on kerosene, which is quite a dirty fuel. Yes. And the oil gets contaminated after 24 working hours. But in that era, rather than dispose of the oil, they put it into these tanks and it was your second to lubricate the drivetrain. Oh, right, so okay. it's a very early form of recycling. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. the trashing pulley there on the side. So. And we said, what were they mostly used for? They so were used, I mean, it was used for whatever attractor was used for the present day. They were used for trashing, for haulage. But it was used for trashing, for haulage, yeah. for plowing, pulling a binder, oh. mowing. All that kind of stuff. Yeah. They, they, they don't ever think there was that. They don't ever think there was that. Yeah. 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 And once you're looking at this in the tin work and all that, I presume you, you, have, you, to you have to do that yourself. You, you, have, to, you yeah. have to fabricate that yourself. Yeah. You can't ring up John Deere or someone. You can order not have to. You can have to. No. You can manufacture and you know, yourself. Yeah. Yourself. I would say the engine in and the radiator and the kerosene tank and all that were they were uh, they unique no, to this or were they? No, the, um, the, we made the radiator ourselves and uh, that's, no, that's the way it was built, that's tank is a new tank I got made for it, yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. But that's where it was always, that's that's the original setup, yeah. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. No, that's a, it's a fantastic looking tractor. Thank you very much, yeah. And um, 
Hopefully we get a chance to take them out again. Huh? We, you get a chance I to will take them out. Hopefully, them. hopefully, yes, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Billy, am I, am I right in saying that you have a plan on getting a, a number of them together for... We were hoping to get 20 of them in Charleville Show next year, but it's very hard to plan something that's about eight months ahead and you don't know what way things are going to go with yeah. COVID and everything. And yeah. You would have a certain amount of fellas who'd be looking to bring them in from the UK and things like it's not something you'll ever see again in the one place, especially in Europe anyway, in America maybe, but... In America you'd see the Waterloo buyers and see yeah. if collect them. Yeah. Like you'd be ho- hopefully, you'd never like... But uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, water, uh, the Waterloo buyer has a much bigger survival rate. Yes. You're talking about 50 states, but that ain't as well. You would, yeah. There's a lot of Waterloo buyers in America. These are a unique. To, to the British Islands, I would say. Oh, is there much of a difference between this and the Waterloo boy? The paint colour is the big one, and the name. Yeah. And the name is very interesting. They, when, when, when they were imported into Ireland, the stipulation was that they couldn't use the yellow and green. Okay. And John Deere uses the yellow and green to the present day yes. of the Waterloo boy. And the other thing they couldn't do was use Waterloo. I sort of used the word Waterloo in the name of it. Okay. So, uh, the name is most important as most of the country. You can see the logo. Yes. And compulsory tillage came in in Britain. Yes. And to support the water for farmers were told they have to work all the time. So, if you look at the logo, the clock says oh, five past six. Right. Okay. And the driver is still working on his tractor at yes. five past six in the evening. Yes. So, that's the, the story behind that. Brilliant. And as I said, uh, most of them were recycled, sadly. Yeah. And the survival rate in Ireland is, well, as I said, we've just three completed and Billy has been well underway. Brilliant, brilliant. Billy, when are we going to see this out and about? It'll be a long time yet, unfortunately, but... Charleville yeah. next year, maybe? It'll probably, it, like, if Charleville does go ahead, it'll be there, but it'll be there as a work in progress. It won't be anywhere near finished, but... That's OK, um, that's OK. It'll be a few years before it'll be out yet. There's it's still fine. a lot of work to do in it, but there's... I suppose we're making progress every day. Like we say, it's a form of therapy. Exactly, definitely. Yeah. You can see that in a minute. Yeah, I was looking there, Joe. Your, your board you've made up in front of us. Yes. Yeah. And you see, he used that tractor to test uh, an integral plough as well. Yeah. That's what he uh, started working on his three pint linkage and that. Yeah. 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 Harry Ferguson brought these into the country. He kind of saw firsthand the problem with. Yes. What was wrong with the drawbar system on tractors? Yeah. That's what kind of... See, the Fortson, the Fortson would be the, the big seller in this country in that era. And a lot of people get killed on the Fortson because... Oh, yeah. Uh, when, they, up, yeah. when they pulled uh, a plough with the tractor, if it met an obstacle, yeah. the front of the tractor would go up. Yeah. And they started using wooden pins in, in the oh, ploughs right, so okay, that the pin yeah. would break. That was the early days of shear pins, as they yes. call them nowadays. So, this, you see, the hitch in this one is... Pulling from outside the centre of gravity. So yeah. they that that's where Harry Ferguson got his first idea. The hitch is outside the engine and it's putting the pressure down on the front wheels when you're pulling. Oh, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. I hope it would have helped you. That's just Here you are, of course. Yeah, good, good. So why not? That's right. Put it on the day. That's good. And just to let us know whenever it is on and we hope yeah. you. Brilliant. Thank you very much for your time. Oh, well, thank you. That's perfect. It's okay, I think. Wow.